hi, how y'all doing? And what's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, listen, welcome to another exciting episode of the Ben Ether Show right here on the SVP TV Network. Y'all know what's going down right here. And listen, today, my special guest is recording artist and Memphis blues man, Mr. Gerard Rayborn. Now listen, Gerard has been cutting a shine with his music all over the Mid-South and in other areas of the world. So listen, I got him right here today with me, yours truly, the Ether Man, and we finna pull out all these questions and answers that we want from him, right? So listen, without further delay, y'all come on, go with me. Let's talk to Gerard. And here we are, y'all. Listen, I'm right here at the table now with my special guest, Mr. Gerard Rayborn. How you doing, Gerard? I'm doing good, Ben, man. I'm doing wonderful, man. I did a long holiday, but I'm glad to be here, man. Hey, it is a blessing to be here, man. And welcome to the show, man. Welcome to the glad show. Glad to be here, man. Okay, man. You know, um, I mean, you've been... We've been like communicating for probably the better part of three years and uh, we've been missing each other and finally we got a chance to come together and uh, make this happen, man. Well, I'm glad. Time is everything, man. You busy, I'm busy, but hey, Lord brought us together, man. That's all that matters. True we, that. We together now. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. Uh, man, listen, but the truth is you've been doing a lot of good things uh, in the city and all over the place when it comes to music. You know, I'm an artist myself. Yes. And uh, I got to tell you, I'm a fan, man. Well, you know what I mean? You. I'm a fan. Uh, you got a lot of good music out there. Um, of course, you know I play you on my radio show. Well, and thank I, you. I, I hear you on everybody's show, man. So well, so how you how you pulling all this off, man? Well, man, um, I, I, it's time is everything. You know what I'm saying? I just recently retired. Really, I was behind the scenes a long time. I've been retired now three years. I've been making some boss moves for me. Okay. Okay. So I put it. I put. I came off my job to live my dream, and I kind of accelerated for me. I've been. I've been on the gas pedal for a lot of people's, but well, now it's my time. When you say job. Mm-hmm. What what job was it that you? Well, was man, I had a good job, man. I was blessed to work twenty six years at Memphis Light Gas and Water. Get out. Twenty six years. What? Yes. No. Uh-huh. Man, I would. I'm the power man. I would have <laughs> never thought that. I would have never thought that. Really? Yeah. So you was there how long? Twenty six years. And doing all that time, you were still doing. Music. I was doing music, man. I was writing songs on my lunch break from house to house. Idea hit me. I just write it down. You know, amazing man. Uh, that's hey man, that's amazing. Um, you know, I, I since we started communicating uh, a little while ago, um, I kind of started following you and looking at some of the things that you've been doing. Research, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Recently, I've been, uh, I've been, I've been looking at some of the stuff you've been doing, uh-huh. and um, I understand that you come from a a family of musicians. Yes, man. Uh huh. Really? So, uh, tell us a little bit about. Tell tell me a little bit about growing up. What was it like for you growing up? Man, growing up, uh, you know, uh, we we was drug to church. You had to go to church every Sunday. Oh morning. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom and dad didn't play, and uh, well, we have a uh, my grand my. My, my, my father was in a quartet group. Okay. And I remember every Sunday as a child from 10 all the way up. And they would have the evening programs. I wanted to go okay. with, with dad. They would have rehearsals. So he was in a group. So they'd have rehearsals at each, everybody's house. All right. And I used to, you know, they'd be playing guitars. And, man, i get the mop. And I just, like, and I, I could you take. Strum, you strumming the mop. I was like the mop right? when I was a little child. <laughs> and they wouldn't let me take the mop to church. Okay. So, so when I got to church, I got a fan. A fan? I got a fan. It was hot, but I, I, I fan a while and I play a and while. And then you play a while. So mama said, look, uh, the boy, uh, he told, told my daddy, you got to get him. He can't be, uh, he getting bigger. He get too big to be playing a fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he got your guitar. He got me a guitar. And I just. You know, I had some bad kids or some cousins and for Christmas, about three days later after Christmas, uh-huh. my bad cousin would tie my guitar up. So, you know, they come over and, and dad just give me another one. So, so how long, okay, you, your dad got you a real guitar. How mm-hmm. old were you when he, when he did that? Well, I got pictures when I was, uh, I was, 
little seven years old with guitars uh -huh. in my hand, but I started getting, I remember me getting my real boss guitar at the age of 10. That was young. Yeah, it was 10. Yeah, that was young. And I would flash the, you know, flash the string and move me up. And every Christmas, I get a better guitar. I get a better guitar. And okay. I even mentioned this in one of my shows. I tell her, you know, my daddy uh, gave me some of the best equipment. And uh, I heard, uh, overheard my mom and daddy. You know, but your talk. dad was a singer too, yeah, he was, right? He saw his brothers and so did he, okay. he saw his brothers and his brothers played guitar, but he but daddy can play. But okay. daddy would tell me, he said, I can't play. But I know you I know when somebody messing up, because those are voices. That's it. That's they voices. So That's he true. his brothers played and he saw I was fatuated with the mop. Okay. <laughs> and the guitar. So he kept on putting but he they were telling me, he said, Well my they was talking they discussing what they would give me for Christmas. Mm hmm And I put this in one of my shows, so it just came natural. Just and I heard my mom and dad discussing what they gonna give me for Christmas. Okay. And uh she said, well, I know you're gonna get him another guitar. And my mama said, He ain't gonna do nothing but tear it up. <laughs> like that. he said, she said, he said, but then he said, but keep on giving to cause one day he's gonna tear it up for real. Okay. And that's what I did. One day, man, I just thought about that. I've been listening to my show. I said, can I tie it up for daddy? Because daddy ain't here. But he kept on giving me the best. So, so okay, and when you said tie it up, you mean play? Tie it up. He, there, was, there, was the, there was two tie it up. They was, the chair was tied up because I was just bad. Okay. But eventually, he, he, he meant to tie it up, up playing, playing right. as a gift. As a gift. And the gift just took over. It just started making noise. So, okay. Do you read music and all I, that too? I did, I did, but I got a good ear. You okay, know, they those are the best plays. Yeah, those I, are the best plays. I, I was able. To, I wish I learned learn more, but I was showing out in school, walking down the hall with the guitars, uh -huh. everybody around me, getting and, them girls. Like, yes, I was. <laughs> I did Get that. the girls. So, but I did. I just couldn't sight read real fast. Okay. But I knew my chords and everything. But hey, my gift, man, it's just. You know, hey, like I said, go on. Actually, my daddy, could I, could I go? And my daddy would, they would have a van and stuff like that. He, he would like, well, want to know if the other kids, the guys going to bring their children. You know, okay, so, okay. you'll call around. Because so some things they want to see and he want to be me in the way. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. He'll call around, your, your boy's going, your boy's going. Okay. And he'll like, well, you can go. I'd be so happy. And man, like when I got to be 16, they rehearsed us. We started making some noise mm -hmm. and we got recruited. Okay. And they, they, being they, they rehearse us, me and my little cousin. Okay, now this your dad and your, your uh -huh. uncle. We begin to make progress. Okay. But they rehearse us for a year. They took a break. Because they had some other, uh, since they strong family, Ronnie Strong. Okay. They was playing guitars and they decided to go on into some other So, band. so your dad and them took a break. They took a break for a while because uh, some of the other musicians, the younger musicians, started to since they strong family, which is Rev uh, Reverend Strong. So, so during that break is when they really. They took, a, they took a break to recruit us and get some other thing. They won't stop. They want to okay. stop. Okay. Uh, have the other young guys. That was a good move. Yeah, so they took, they took a about a year or so, but, but he kept on rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And we weren't quite yet right, but we would make a little noise. They were rehearsing us about a year. And you were how old then? Man, I was first time I hit the stage with my dad and them, 17 and a half. How'd that make you feel, man? Man, real good, because, hey, that, 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 that's, that, that, that's uh, like apprenticeship. Was, get, was that like your first time in front of uh, kind of a big crowd? Yes, man. I never would forget uh, it, oh, uh, it was in Sardis, Mississippi. Sardis, Mississippi, man, was a well, I, it's called the Education Building okay. in Sardis. And about uh, seven months ago, I went down there and I told the like museum. I, I told my wife, pull over, pull over. Okay. And I got pictures. And we pulled up. She said, "What's wrong?" She thought something wrong. With the car. I said, "I got to take a picture." This is the first place I was considered pro playing professional. Okay. And how long had it been since you man. actually been there to see that place? Like I say, I was. 17, 17. 18 years old. I'm, I'm 52 now. Wow. So I had to, that spot of ground was one of my first, that was my first day. That was a long time. That was my first. So we took pictures, me and my wife took pictures. It was kind of emotional for me doing this. With all the things I've done, all the places I've been, all of my beginning, then like the first grade of your school, like you're going to junior high or high school, that's your first so, day. Of so in your mind back then, you were right back there. Right back there. And just thank when you God played for, that night. For uh, all I've sung, all, all I've been in my, you know, rising in the music. You know what I'm saying? It's a gift. Because you can't, some of this stuff is, I went to school a little bit, but uh, some of this is just natural. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quite natural it is. I mean, 
you started at a real early age and you know for you to develop it like you have to this point it took a lot of it took a lot of dedication. Well, let me tell you one thing. My dad and just sung traditional stuff, and then eventually they got to the point they showed out, and then some of my cousins, it's just a strong family, and I got recruited with my cousins. And, man, we started, you know, and I stayed with dad. Man, but anyway, we started recording, going to the studio. I'm at the age of 19. My bass line, I was playing bass guitar then. Okay, but wait a minute. You play lead now, don't you? I play lead. But back then you were playing bass. I, I started leaving. With, I played both. I started okay. leaving with my, with my dad, and that was the opening with my cousins. Uh, we traveled, we toured. It was some big time, of uh, uh, some big time gospel people, the Truth Ads, and some of the William brothers. They took us on the road. Oh, the William brothers? Yes, we we, we left here, man. We, we did, I, I never said I was just working at Zyros, you know, on third. Okay. And I said, well, I was making about. About $10, $89 an hour. It was a lot of money. But, but I said, I can come back here, man. We went to California, we went to Vegas, you know. You, that young? Yeah, we went, to, we, they, we went on tour. <laughs> we, was, we was on tour with the big boys. Okay, so I, when you went on that tour, okay, you were part of the Sensational Strong, Strong family. family. Yes. Okay, but uh, the, the group before, the family group was the... Raven, Raven brother, brother. Which, is, which is their uncles. That's, their, mama is, their mama is a Raven. So okay. Ronnie Strong's mother is a raper. So it's still all family. Still, still all family. It's still all family. It's just a younger uh, 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 portion. Then I started out in school, the jazz, okay. just being creative and, you know, playing a little, little funk with the gospel. Okay. And it's just all, but just, I thank God for both of them. That's my foundation with my dad and them. But the, create, the creativity came from, as I de developed, hearing yourself on the radio. Uh, Jane Chambers and all these two and uh, being with the Kansas Spirit. So when did you first hear yourself? Uh, oh, I mean, the first time, was it a project of your own or was with, oh, with, with the, the family? Group? With the family. Okay, well, but that still was, that, still that was big, man. Oh, yes. So when was it, when was the first time you actually heard yourself on a, a, a record that was played on the radio? Well, we, we had certain, certain things at home that Brother Chambers and uh, uh, all the radio stations would play. Uh -huh. but, but when you go out of town, we went to uh, St. Louis and Chicago with some songs on I, I heard it in the car because it was us but going on the way to Chicago and and they playing your music you, know, you always have right, to go right. back then and this and was you, gospel this is gospel okay. they, 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 they won't believe you there to you at the studio because there was so much people that don't show up like man you got to come in here and do a number that Sunday morning uh -huh. And then, hey, they at home, because you know, everybody from Chicago is from Mississippi, so they want to blow you was actually here before, them, before they go buy a ticket. Okay, I see. So they, they, but they would, we'd be on the way to the city, and they'd be playing us, man. I said, man, I ain't never heard that on the radio. It was just, man, just smiling, you know, at the early age, man. Right. And that bass okay. was walking, man. You know, I I played pretty good good time. They said I was pretty, they were pretty good on that bass. Well, you, I mean, you got a good, solid music background. You started off young, your, your dad, your uncles, all of them. You had a lot of good teachers. Oh, yeah. You had a lot of good teachers. And, you know, uh, to me, what's even more important than the good teaching is the, 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 all the teachers that were around you were definitely looking out for your well-being. They weren't just, they didn't just give you this knowledge and say, hey, y'all, uh, this will take you through life. They should. They showed you some other things too. Oh, some definitely. lessons. How to uh, read. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a writer and arranger, and um, uh, my uncle. Uh, did you make up a song? I can follow you because I'm, I'm kind of like walking beside you. You can make up a song. I'm kind of like we can make up a song right now, and I kind of hear where you're going and your voice down here, and I, I'm, I'm kind of very. That, that was, that's a gift too. Okay. You know, it's a gift. I mean, it's a we, had, we had a lady named Sister Humphrey. And man, she was singing. We had a homecoming, and she singing this song about Molly the King. And, uh -huh. and man, you didn't know, not know what she gonna say. Every every time she was singing a different way, she was singing a different way. And she was singing, had to follow her, and we like, we had to follow her. And man, her time was all, but we had to just watch her. Oh man, you know. Well, did you? Let me ask you something. Did you ever? Were, did you ever sing in the shower? Were you a ever little bit, a little, a little bit. bit, but not too much? But you know what? I was. All my cousins were, I ain't gonna say more gifted than me, but guess mm -hmm. what? I was on the team, but I was always in the background. But I was a 
I was a linebacker. I was always pushing. So you can, if you're a good follower, you can be a good leader. But you finna step out front now. Oh, but no, but yeah. I, I mean, you've been out front a while. Yes. Yeah, you've been out front a while, and you really finna step out front on the 24th, right? I remember at the age of, uh, uh, I even played for Reverend Al Green up to two. You know what? I was about to ask you about that. Okay, before listen, uh, I don't want to. I want them. Okay. To, I want the people to be able to get a full, the okay. full spectrum uh -huh. of who Gerard Rayborn okay. is. Okay, now we talked about um, your family, the Rayborn Brothers Gospel Quartet. Uh -huh. We talked a little bit about uh, the Sensational Sensation. Strong family. Uh -huh. Now you handle. You handled all those things so well that eventually you became a member of the sanctuary yeah. thing, right? Uh huh. Okay, so you did those research. Yeah, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the sanctuary thing. Well, at the time, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Herb Mincy, uh, was kind of close to Ad Green. No matter of prior to that, uh, the Reverend Green came over to our home church. And just did, we did a, a one night revival, whatever. The, so, the Al Green. Before I started playing with him, the Lord just made it away. So, you know, so like, you saw him when he came. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. What were you thinking? What, what was man? What I was, was in I, your I mind was right there? Saturated, man, because you know this, this is the world renowned Reverend Green. And man, we, and we played. He said, "I'm too close." And he was watching it, and I was playing for him. He said, "Oh, these boys can play." Cause we know how to stay back, and let him do. We, we, right. I was excited, but I didn't show that because being professional, right, right. you got to uh, be assistant to him. But when so, you saw him, the minute you saw him, uh -huh. didn't that validate a lot of the work yes. you had been doing? Yes. You knew that you wouldn't have got in the presence of nobody like him. But see, first of all, that you would be called up to the flow if you couldn't handle it, cause you want to embarrass him. Your, my uncle knew that I could handle him. With whatever task they put before me, right. and we we wasn't allowed, we wasn't. Ha I was happy, but I was professional. You were disciplined, and I know how to assist whoever was doing what I was taught well. So, but he said, "Craven, they they can they can handle it because if you know how to assist." And then man, about three years later, the, the the door the door opened. Okay, okay. And I was a member. I was over about Bishop hired me. He hired me, and it's so much history. And, and, Give us some. Give us some. So uh, we, we we played. He said, "Man, uh, you know." He said, "A lot of my uh, uh, deacons are old." He said, "Man, you, I know if you're over there with my uncle." He said, "You could play. I want. I need some youth, some men." So he had me singing with the men. Just some youth. I said, "I'm just all around person, especially if it's my job." He asked me, "Could you do?" You something? said the bishop. Yeah. Okay. Bishop Green. Bishop Green. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make that clear. We're talking about the one and only, the one and only Reverend Doctor Al Green. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I just wanted to clear that up and make sure everybody knew we was talking about the good Reverend Doctor Al oh, Green. Yes. Okay. So uh, you became a member of his band. Yes, Sanctuary Band. And then, and then actually, uh, we did a few band quests with him. But like I said, that government job, I couldn't mm -hmm. really travel, so I was okay. He said, "Man, we did some." Some things in the studio in the back, you know what I'm saying? He just, I, it was just a wonderful feeling. We allowed tours here, and we just able to to work with. That's him. some but, immaculate music. But, history, but guess what? Man. So, you know, so at the time he was traveling, and things had picked up, and uh, the church. You no, know, my band name is Church Boys, right? You know that? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. And two of my guys. Uh, as a matter of fact, Jarvis is my first cousin to sing with me. Mm -hmm. He took my spot, and I went back home. So Jarvis been there. Some of the church boys are still my my nephew that looked just like me is on the organ, which his father got me hired. So I got cousin and my best friend Cedric. Uh, my best friend still there. My cousin still there. And um, my nephew is still there, so his family is still all around Bishop. So he had a highly respect for me. And I told him why I would leave in Howard if he said, "Man, I had a lot of people in my camp, but nobody ever left me the way you left. You always come back home." That's amazing, man. Yeah. That that is some amazing. That's just I don't even know how to put that in words. That had to make you the the the, the drive and determination that you already had. That had to take it up, what, seven, eight notches? Yes. You know, that just made you really go and get it. But you I know. share that, that that knowledge because the guy, the guy who seen my right-hand man that's still with me, 
biggest thing is he we doing some things real nice. But being we switched jobs. Okay. He was on the David Adams show. He has been on the uh show with uh Frankie Beverly and uh Confunctions them overseas, you know uh-huh. what I'm with, with, right. with Sinbad. Okay. My cousin was just church boy. Okay. By him, we switching spots. Okay, so he he still he plays still, with you. He still plays with me. And he me. still plays with He's Bishop. Played, uh-huh. But see, by him, Bishop seen his talent. He said, man, I would be forever grateful for you and Bishop because you hadn't gave your job up. Bishop would never know what I could do. Right. And so they are, it's just like we still family. And so he said, he said, man, I'm grateful. Because, you know, he still get checked every time they show Al Green on TV or a Sinbad show. You sign the paper because you get royalties. Okay. Uh, Sinbad the comedian? Mm-hmm. That's, that's royalty. That's, but it's like I said, even David Letterman. He, my job told me I've been on David. I saw it. David Letterman, uh, different place because, man. This is your cousin. This is, my, this is a church boy. Still there. Wow. And, man, you know, hey, my nephew, as a matter of fact. What, what do he play? What, what does he play? He plays the guitar. He plays the bass. But Al was just using for vocals. So he sang and played? Mm-hmm. And my, my nephew, I was there, the keyboard player, he was 15 years old. They, they had them playing the horns. So now he's on keyboard. He's the main keyboard player, so he's been there a long time. Then plus his father got us over there. So it's a big family. You know, I, I was sitting back, uh, I was sitting back when I was looking uh, and researching some of your documents. I, I, I was kind of really taken by surprise to know that you had this kind of background, you know, at a young age and not just something you decided to do later in life. Did you ever once think about, uh, after you met uh, Reverend Al Green, did it ever cross your mind to quit your job? No. <laughs> so you weren't going to quit the job, I wasn't right? going to quit the job, even though I had some good benefits and I've always uh, had the opportunity to, to uh, that's good vacation days, but uh, but man, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that could be seasonal up and down. Right. And right. Uh, I, I, could, I, still, I still did my thing in part time. Mm-hmm. But it was just meant for me to put those many years in. Like right now, if it's snow tomorrow, then I can, that mailman run around, I'm going to be all right. That's oh, why. Yeah. That's yeah. why now. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to be all right, right? I'm, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> okay, as long as the mailman runs. As long as the mailman runs, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be all right. So, so now I got time. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, to do what the Lord has gave me to do. And man, I've been so seeds for different people. This is my night, my time. Yeah, yeah. You got a big night uh coming up. I mean, to me now, all these nights you've had have been big nights. But this is a special big night. Well yeah, I, I was telling my wife the other night, uh my fifty birthday was important to me. Mm-hmm. Uh my retirement party was she played a big role in both of them. Uh was important to me. When when did you have your retirement party? How long ago that's I've been, been? Three I just took three years and two months ago. Did so you I, you have a ball? Oh all I had an all white party. It was nice. It was nice. Same place I had the video shoot at with my mom. It was real okay. nice. But I told her this is important to me too because I, this kind of came back. My, my my management people and their management people had a meeting, and um, matter of fact, they were going to do us and me and Bobby Rush together. But Bobby Rush had did something in the town. He had some things he could, they couldn't really work it out. Okay. So they said, "Well, look, man, you you've been you know they had a hot record. They kind of talked me into. They said we want to do this for you. I think it's time for you to really show how much you have grown." Your name pops up here and there. This is the conversation around mm-hmm. the city, and I they hadn't seen a whole lot of me. You know, I don't, uh, I don't just pop up. You know, I was about to say that. You, mm-hmm. you know, one thing that I've noticed about you, especially after talking to you right now, you never really, you didn't never try to force anything. It, it just, you just kind of did the work, and everything just kind of lined up without you really. Because I know a lot of people really try to. Force things and, and when it backfires on them, it, it leaves them. Yeah, it see, leaves uh, them in a real see, worse way. Uh, I, I've been a promoter, and I've been. I'm a singer. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. If I hadn't did nothing in a while, like my last, last time I did something, mm-hmm. uh, I'm grateful for this. I write a lot of songs. Bobby or OJ uh, recently uh, interviewed me. He said, "Well, man, you got a lot of songs, but uh, this this last one here pretty much kind of like it's different." And it's kind of like one that's kind of like making noise in his his book. I said, well, it's, it's, when you're different, it's going to be something like, like, like you, 
you my friend. And every time I see you being, ain't no telling how you coming, but they know you coming. You different. And, and can't nobody beat you being you. And you're when, right, when you're you right. be when you when I be me and you be you, you know what I'm saying? We can put and the that's same the beauty of that's the beauty thing. That yeah. makes us just so different, but we so we are peculiar people. You know what I'm saying? Just being you. Very essential. What you said, man. Like I said, you <laughs> talked about, about breaking boundaries. Yeah. And yeah. doing something. If you put something in my spirit last night, it really means something. He said, man, you can't be afraid to be different. No, you, know you got to do you, man. Huh? You got to do you. Listen, God you didn't gave, you. You gave me my confirmation. I was, I was fighting that thing. You said, no, whatever you put on your to do it. Do you, man. Listen, he didn't bring you this far to forsake you. Mm -hmm. He brought you here because it's your time to shine. This is your time, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, listen, for whatever it's worth, I support you for. Oh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, whatever I can do. But see, because I realized that um, when you, um, I got friends, man. So I'm telling them I'm, I'm providing my, uh, my, my Corvette buddies, my, uh, you know, I, I rode with the Corvette Bill Street for a long time. I, oh, I, for I, real? That's my family. Okay. So it's a lot of a Corvette. You been, own a Corvette too? Yes, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I had two. I got one now. Okay, but you got I, one now. Yeah, but I got to have. I got to keep one. I got to keep one. Okay. So that's in my blood. The Corvettes. I ain't been riding on no motorcycle too fast, but, but the Corvettes. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, you know. They've been supporting me. I've been driving around the country with, with them, and they, that's my family. But, man, I feel like, though, if you had me, I got to help you. So this is the difference. But some people want to just show up and do their thing and want their money. Right, right. Ain't told nobody where right, they're going to be. Right. Ain't just want their money. Right, right. But I feel like if you come see me, you better catch me now. Because it's going to be about six months, a year before you see me again. Okay. And okay, that's because you're to, moving. To, to me, that's you're way, moving all the that's, time. That's the way you, you work on the outskirts, but what I'm trying to say, you, you'll be a demand. Because if I ain't got 200, at least 200 people to see me, I need to go sit down. I agree with you. At least, I, if something can right. happen, I just feel disappointed in myself. If I ain't least I got 100. If I got time to promote it, my friends and family, I'll just, I, the Lord might just bless in my way. I'm, I'm expecting some people. But, hey, you never know. Everybody got their shots. Man, I think Everybody it's going to be. I think it's going to be a good turn. I, I, I time is everything. Yeah, I think and it's I, I be a really good be the, the seed that you uh, has has planted. Not only for what I did for others, but this is just what I did. And I got I got music. I just been holding. For. Gerard, you know everybody just can't. Can't know anybody just go and book <laughs> book the paradise. You know what I mean? <laughs> can't know anybody just do that, right? You gotta have. Don't put your house up. Have a little money. Have some yeah, favor. That's, yeah, yeah. That's some favor somewhere. So but, yeah, yeah, definitely. But, uh, uh, you know, you've been man. You've been out here. You've been really putting in the work. It, it, it's everybody can see it. Everybody can hear it. Um, and like I told you the other day when we spoke, uh -huh. uh, people like you and me. We we're just different. Wouldn't it really be boring if everybody wore the same shirt every day, wore the same pair of pants, drove the same car, lived in the same type house, ate the same food? Where is the fun in that? We need to be different. That would be a boring life. Yeah, it would be a boring life. So people like you, people like me, we bring. The, we bring this shock, the excitement, the expectation, and all that. Yeah, yeah, you know. But let me show you, man. The last time, this is this made me so much of how these young ladies. The last time, I was wondering what you would ask me how I would perform. I'm a young man, but I performed. The last time I performed at Prairie Day was 1999. Okay, so you you performed there before? Yes. Who was you with then? Were you just John, John and Taylor? Okay, Tyrone so you played Davis. you played before yes. them or you was before before Johnny Taylor and Captain Curtis Lee, and I I I, I, I wish my, my manager had to had to post it somewhere. We can't right. find it. I told him one day you gonna, but oh man, yes, nineteen ninety nine. What what kind of crowd was it? What kind of crap? You couldn't, wouldn't even stand. I mean, the the place, was uh, <laughs> they didn't remodel it now. Right. The place holds 3,500. Okay. And I bet you it was over 3,000 people. Wow. Oh, yes. I mean, so you was there with Johnny Taylor? Yes, man. Okay, you got, what kind of person was he? I never got to meet him. Well, he's off to himself, but he was cool. Everybody was peaked. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I just heard of, uh, you know, so many different stories, man, but they had security and and all the certain people you couldn't hardly get to them, you know what I'm saying? We had some food back there and right. they had their own special room. Okay. Just just grazing their stage was good enough for me. 
And man, just seeing them, man, I, I watched the videos, man. I'm taking some, it's funny, Ben. Man, Johnny Taylor had them rings, man. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, and I was a young man, man. I said, He was prolific. He was the boy. I said, I said, I got to have a Johnny Taylor ring. And man, I went to I went to pawn shop. <laughs> I went to pawn shop. And I got a one, I said, I beat this one like you. And that joke, I was I didn't have the money that I had that I got now. Right. But I bought that that run cost three thousand dollars. And guess what? It took me a year and a half, two years to get it out because I didn't have no money. But I right, just wanted right. one because they had one. All okay. them that was all right. It was real too. It took me two years to get it out. Man, you know, I tell you, you talking about that those the jewelry, man. Uh that reminds me of a chapter in my life uh -huh. where I had uh I, I once owned over two million dollars worth of jewelry. Oh, and I got in I got in bad shape one time and Went and hocked it for about, uh, I think it was twelve thousand dollars. That's all they would give me for it. Well, when I went back to get it, the guy had sold the pawn shop and moved completely out the state. Nobody would tell me anything. I lost everything. But you gave him enough to move. I gave him enough to move, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I still laugh about it today, man. But yeah, I, I can relate to you seeing all those rings on Johnny Fingers, and you was like, man, I gotta. You know that's 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 got to be what's going on. You want to you want to look the part. You know what I mean? Um, well, to move on, um, what about little uh, little Milton Campbell? Tell me about little Milton Campbell. Man, I got a new song. I got a song on my new album, man. It's called The Right Age. And I uh, first of all, uh, Milton was nice. Kind of hard to read, almost like Al, but he was real nice. I saw him at Kroger's. Okay. And uh, and I walked up to him and said, I said, hello, Mr. Milton. He would get some eggs. Okay. And I said, hey. I said, man, I enjoyed your music. My mom played all your music and stuff like that. And uh, I said, um, I asked him how he was doing, man. He said, man, I got, he said, I got about three weeks off. And I'm going to head back out, you know, because he's still about what year was this now? Oh, man, this this has this been about... About ten years ago. About ten years ago. Yeah. Is he still with us? Oh, no, no, he's, he's, he's passed. He's passed now. Passed now. Okay. But but man, um, he said I'm 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 off. He had a house here and a house in Vegas. Okay. So you know he was working and stuff, man. So he said I got about three weeks off and um and I'm head back out, man. I said, well, man, we're good seeing you, man. I said, I said uh, I got something coming up. I like that your number. Get your number and I can see something. I said I got something in the country. You know about a couple more months if you at home. You know, sometimes he said, I'm not working as much as I used to because the style's changing. And he just said he wasn't going to do certain things. You know, okay. To, okay. The liquor songs, candy liquor, he yeah, was a man yeah. of standard. Right. Okay. So he said, so the real, they, they, they work were getting slower. He had some work, but it wasn't like every week like okay. every other I week. So I, I said, let me get your number. And I'm going to call you, man. I said, I'm planning to rehab like a little reunion in Mississippi. And um, maybe you can come by. And uh, sign some autographs and just say hello. That'll mean the people, world to the people. Okay. From the hard reach to hard. You know, he said, man, he gave me a number. He said, man, you know, I, I uh, you know, uh, I read people pretty good. And he said, man, you didn't come with no BS. I said, I ain't, I ain't got no whole lot of money. I said, well, I give you something for your time. And he was off. Okay. Was, like he told me, it right. slowed down. And um, so I said, I got a little small band, man. Uh, uh, VP, y'all know some blues? I said, we know the blues. He know he. I didn't know what he was gonna do. He said, y'all know some blues. So he do like a melody of a song. Okay. He could do five songs. Oh, he would do a medley. And then melody. Okay. And I, I, I got to, I got to learn that melody. That's smart. You, but it's no he, he right. just rolling to it. And uh, but man, we got to got to talking, man. And like like I say, and he was saying, okay, I didn't have a whole lot of money. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think I had, uh, I gave him six hundred dollars. And that was a personal appearance. And he, he put the little tip to the down there. So he still made, almost made a thousand dollars. Took pictures. He made a thousand dollars. This just how hustle would do to make somebody out of nothing. He mm -hmm. made a thousand dollars in one day. In one day. And wasn't doing nothing. So that's when he looked at it. I was I didn't I wasn't doing anything. He wasn't even it wasn't, he wasn't bull. It wasn't even nothing planned for him. It just he, that's how the, some people now they so cocky. They got I got the hat in. Right, right, it. right. If it's a last minute decision, if I'm not off and it's around the corner, I'm gonna go see. What Duff got for me, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. So he just made, but he, he took a liking to me. 
And so he, he began to lie, call himself. I said, man, I don't want anything. I just I just called and said, hello, man. Say, how you doing? Take your medicine today. He said, you said, you talk, you talk to me like you, um, my son don't you know, do that. I said, man, I just want to make sure you're all right. Because I look and start looking. You know, I, but I, I see that. You know, Gerard, I see that about you a lot, even on Facebook and different things, that you mm -hmm. go and visit people and oh, yeah. you you share things with them. So that's just that's just a uh, part of you. Uh -huh. And he said, well, man, he said, look, one day he said, man, you, I've been around you all day. And my brothers, my sons, and all my cousins, like I said, they mm -hmm. would play guitar. And I picked up the guitar. And he did not know. That I could play. Oh. And he told me, he said, son, okay. he okay. said, son, let me tell you something. You know how many brothers, he's out with checking you out. He said, you know how many brothers of men wish they can play and you could play and don't want to play? He said, you better play that thing every chance you get. He said, cause you're going to be tired. Well, you had a two shows, three shows back to back. He said, then you get to the other side, they go like, you shut up. They want to hear both of y'all. So then he was telling me, in the blues, just keep on saying, they were, could you be quiet? They want to hear this and this. That's right. That's what they pay for, this and this. So he said, that's, that, if you're the quarterback, that's your move. You know how many people, they got, if you, if you every time you got to get up there and wiggle and shake and, mm -hmm. and dance, yeah. Yeah. you can buy some time. You go over here and play for her, mm -hmm. about four or five minutes, sing a little bit, go there and play for them, him. He said, that's going to save you. You working when you ain't working. If you reroute your routine, if something going wrong. So do y'all stay friends a long time? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I asked him for a good talk. He said, let me think about it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I, you asked him for his, one of his good <laughs> talks? <laughs> <laughs> But I am, you I, wanted one of his good talks. Oh, yeah, it was a green, a green and a blue, green and yellow Gibson. He said, I got to do some strong thinking on that one. But he took a like it to me, and guess what? Did you ever get that guitar? I didn't get it, but, 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 I, but <laughs> I got me a 335. But you tried, just like, just like, but we talked about it. Okay. But look, I hate the idea. Now, Milton, uh, strap iron just reached in the past. Strap iron, you know, strap iron, his role manager. You know, strap iron? Uh, no. You get me? I don't get, I don't get but man, he, was, he just reached in the past about a year, and he knew how close. Milton didn't take a li liking, they don't say liking, but uh, Lincoln. Are you finna tell me you got that guitar? I, mean, I, didn't, I got one just like it, but he knew that the person that, how Milton was, he liked the people, but he didn't link the people like he linked it to me. Right, okay. So he said, boy, you, little Milton's son. So he, he would bring me up, he said, the little Milton's son. He would always call me little, little Milton. Like, and I got, I got, the good, I got a guitar just, just like, like, just like okay. it, man. He calls me now. Okay. It's a Gibson, three thirty-five, but I didn't get a chance to get healed. But I, I, I every, every, but I got this song. It's called "I'm the Right Age," and I was thinking about a conversation that he talked. We talked about. It. I put it all in writing, and I was helped it. Now it's it's gonna be like now. I understand what he was talking about because I said I wasn't gonna say no. But I like that pretty stuff, right? Okay. Um, Duncan, Lee, see, let me tell you, it's the difference between Southern Soul. We do a little soul, but the difference between Southern Soul and Blues, there's some places you're going to go be in. Well, I'm, I'm going to make you international because you are already national, but you start singing some real blues and some soul. But you go to there's some places you go to, Okay. they don't want to hear no Southern Soul. They don't run you off that boat. Right. They just go, want to hear go, blues. Go, yeah. And there's they a just place you blues. go out to, out to blues, they don't want to hear no Southern Soul. They throw rocks at you. So you got to know how to read your crowd. Bobby right. Russell's a smart man. He played all circles. And I won't be like Bobby. See, this this, this what we're doing now. It, a Southern Soul is fine. They don't have a gender. They don't have a, a, a thing for a grammar set up yet. They're working on that. Right. Right, it doesn't have... That's a genre. genre yeah, it's not a genre yet, yeah, but they're trying I, to make it. And look, let me tell you something before I go too far. I've been working so hard this year, before mm -hmm. this year. This year is almost over. Okay. I will have two CDs this year. I'm working on two CDs at the same time. Okay. So the other album is, the soul album is complete. So I did six already, a traditional. Traditional. And I'm dedicated to my two great grandfathers, Reese Bond. And Papa Doug. How many songs on the album? It's going to be about 12. Okay. On the traditional, but, but, but both my two great grandfathers, which is my mother's grandfather and my daddy's grandfather, were real blues men. So it's in my blood. Okay. 
All I'm right. talking about the stuff that Bobby Rush is doing, the you know, the 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 the, the down and gritty, the water, the, stuff like that. the the nitty gritty. Yeah, the real. Nitty. That's that's gonna okay. get paid. Okay. And I want you to tap in that with you with your style mm -hmm. and what you have your character. See, we, we got stuff to sound that so sound good. Uh, do I hear you gonna write me some song? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. Hey, man That's hey, what I'm talking about. Man, cause, cause I tell you what, I help so many people. Oh, I hope so many people. If I could help you, you I might be writing your coattail. Yeah, man. See, I, I, I can all, use some songs. But see the thing about it. Uh, you can't be scared to be different. And you, right. you different. So you got to, I got a song that I wrote called Shirley. Okay. Now this is a real, this is simply, uh, no, uh, the OJs had one by Brandy. That was the Brandy. They're like, that was a the dog. They were talking about Brandy. Okay. You remember Brandy? Yeah, sitting by an open fire. Yeah, I day. thought they were talking about the woman. Yeah, yeah, they, they were talking, talking about the dog. They were talking about the dog. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I said, me and my brother always would mess with uh, my granddaddy would pick up dogs. Okay. And we would come down home, they stayed at home. And she and he named his dog Shirley. Like, okay. like a real Shirley. Like a, real like a Shirley. woman. So okay. everybody would play with it. The, and they'd throw all the food out there, man. On Sundays, man, we had 80 people at the house. Everybody throw their food out there. Shirley's eating bones, man, neck bones. And, the dog. Yeah. Okay. Shirley so good. So Shirley eating good, man. She was, <laughs> she was, man, she eating good, man. So okay. Shirley got to one of them neck bones, man, and Shirley broke her tooth. Her teeth were messed up on one side. This oh, dog. okay. Yeah, man. So, but anyway, the granddad and them, uh, they would have to evacuate their house. Okay. Uh, I wrote out, so my, my granddad was blessed to have 88, 88 acres of land. Okay. And uh, so the man, he got a good deal on it, but see, he didn't probably do the research. It was good land, but it was bad land. It was bad land. Okay, it was bad. It was, it was good, good land, but it was bad land. It would flood twice a year, and they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't, they got to leave. They had to come to Memphis. I see. They could. They had to. They could get out. They had to, but so they had. They got all they can get. You know what I'm saying? They, they left Shirley that particular time. Oh, they left the dog. They left Shirley, and Shirley. What he, happened to her? Well, she died in the flood. Oh. She died of thirst in the flood. Could you see water over there? She died of thirst in a flood. <laughs> that's, <laughs> look, that's oh see, man, see, come on, see, man. See, I, I wrote a song about that's a hell of a hook, there, man. But see, I said, uh, you know what I'm saying? She died of thirst see, they, it, in it, a it, flood. It, yeah, you can see the water like you so you hungry in a bread truck right there, right there, and and water out there. But she mm -hmm. tied on the porch. Okay. And they left plenty of food, but she 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 knocked the food out. She ate the food uh -huh. and water right there. And you and and she they, couldn't, and get, they, they couldn't get home. And they gonna say, well, Granddaddy knew that someone right. He turned the he turned the corner, and she was stiff as a log all this time. Y'all didn't know I was talking about my granddad's dog. I like that, huh? But yeah. that was a, a true. Yeah. And I said she she had a a pretty shiny coat. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm talking about the dog. The dog. I said, yeah, I said, then, uh, I said, then she ate so many, her teeth were missing because she had a bone in her throat. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay. That's how she had an overbite. It didn't look right. It was just like, this dog was, was, everybody loved the dog, but the dog was a straight dog. Well, well. But it's just, it's real talk. My, my family, everybody know about Shirley. Everybody but you know, it. I'm just, I, I'm sitting here listening to how you putting that together, right? Yeah. So. What's your what's your process for writing a song? What's your who, do, what, do, when, and where? Do you gotta be in a quiet place, or do you uh, just sitting right here? You can write one. I can write one. It won't be perfected, but I can give me three titles. I wrote a song the other night. Uh, you can get the blueprint. Is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You can get the if, blueprint. If, if you love me like you say you do, why in the hell you treat me this way? Okay. See, some of them stuff could be a sermon too. I listen to a lot of preachers. I listen to. Uh, oh, you listen to a lot of preachers. I listen to preachers. Okay. I listen to whatever. You can get a sermon off Facebook. You can get a sermon off people like a hole in the wall. Okay. You know, right. I mean, I mean, it's just well, anytime somebody can. I love my boot. It's just it's whatever people can relate to it ain't over the head. You know what I'm saying? Right there in their face. You know, I, I I saw a baby on Facebook that was mocking a preacher. <laughs> 
uh, he would preach a little bit, then he'd take his towel and wipe his head. Uh, and then, he had watched that preacher so Right, long. he had watched that preacher for so long. Now, that would be a good song. <laughs> Write a song about that baby, man. <laughs> but you know what, Neil and I watched this, this thing for, for, I really talk about the niece sale. Oh, yeah, and but listen, look. and you ain't even told me about Bill Coday. Yes. Okay? Man, All that's, right. that's, that's, my, that's my, he gave me my star. Okay, he, Coday gave you your star. Yes. Bill Cody gave Bill you a star. Okay, uh, it says here 1992 to 95. Mm -hmm. Okay, you was working with Bill Cody. Bill Cody. He allowed me to, uh, the first one told me, the, uh, he didn't allow no jeans. Oh, you, Keith, old school, how to dress professionally. Right. Uh, some people get up as weird thing now, you know what I'm saying? They just So he'd be cussing me, me and uh, you out right now. No, right? no, no, no. Well, he won't see the bottom enough. So we, we can set up some equipment. But you right. we do we do on a show, but what he just said for him, performing. You know right. what I'm saying? On stage. Right, like, he wanted you to be look up the part. all the way, right. And yeah. man, he had us man looking like businessmen, man. He uh, we had flyers, I had briefcases, man. We going on set out, you know, just different stuff. He's just like, like, what you doing with this briefcase on stage? Well, my money's in here. <laughs> <laughs> but we had on suits. But he gave me my star. Uh, he said, don't give him too much. Is he still uh, around? No, he's passed. He's that's passed? Anna, Anna Cody, you know Anna Cody? She's, uh, uh, that's, she's still, she's here now. Uh, she's she just got Joe Joe Mary and she have uh, she had Karen Wolf, but uh, that was his wife. His wife is still here. So, okay. but he gave me my star, man. And uh, Denise gave him his star. Well, he didn't give him the star, but that was like Denise Cell brother. So, so you sang with Denise too? I didn't sing with Denise, but I remember my first impression when I saw him. It was at the Coliseum. They mm -hmm. had a big blues show, and I said, and he about being different. So he is a soul. He was a he was an artist, but he there was a major show. So okay, Bill was doing background for Denise. She was tore up your picture. You know, she he was, but he was so cool. He had a red suit on. Okay, he was doing background. He was doing background. He had a lady, okay. but he was so cool. And man, when they was when they when they, when they, do, when they went to a fast song, uh -huh. man, he spinning around in the background, and I'm listening. To, I'm listening to her, but I'm looking at him. Okay. I'm talking about, I just infatuated how he was moving. I'm going to wear the audience. Oh, I said, man, she, y'all was good, but you stole the show. <laughs> you know, well, like from the sideline. Did you write in the music for Denise? Yeah. Uh, you produced one of her songs, didn't you? What was the name of that, that song? Pay Before You Pawn. Pay Before You Pawn. It's going down. And uh, another song I did. And you wrote those songs? Yes. But the, the, this is true thing. Pay Before you, pay before you Pawn. I wrote all that. It's going down there for me and her. That was her idea she had. But I helped her put it all, put the wheels and stuff together. That was me and her song. Okay. So I, I tried. It's something like a Sam Cooke type of song. She said, boy, this song is so different. I was telling her that she said, some don't what I don't normally do, but it sounds good. I said, give the people something different. So, okay. uh, so she did. But see, this is a trip thing about it. I had gave her my song. So one of my signature songs, my first signature song was was 24 Hours. Okay. You know what? And I, and I like her, that song. She took it here. She asked me. She said, she the, said. She, the 24 Hours yes. song? Yes. Yes, she took it to another level. Man, I looked at my checks. I said, you can say it again. How, wait a minute. Yes, that's okay. my first song. That was your first song. That was my breakout song, 24 Hours, 103.5. I've been playing it for 10 years. Bob them used to play it. But she did a version of it. Yes, 100%. I ain't had to give up nothing. <laughs> I, I you made that. good bank off that, did you? Yes, overseas. I mean, I, I thank God for that one. Now, even though they paid for your pop, I did all this. A lot, lot, lot of this politics and stuff. You, you know, you might have seventy five percent, but you still got to give up. You no, know, right. You got to do a little. They're gonna find a way to they get, gonna find get like you. But I'm saying, yeah. this is like a friendship. This is for her. This is for the queen. But yeah. I'd be like, say, man. So that I love twenty four hours. So I didn't know she did that. When I I got to listen to that tonight, man. That's I got to awesome. listen to that. So she, she did. asked me when I asked. She said, "She said, 
I like the way you 24 hours. I be brand new. Yeah. You can get yeah. this love all over again. She like them. Yeah, yeah, that love. Same thing tomorrow night. You know me, baby. Know everything that I like. Cause she she didn't have a whole lot of rain, but she liked them little heels. Yeah, yeah. And she, she said, those she, little said lines she said, and she stuff. said, she said, she said, baby, you think I can, I can try that? And I said, um, you the queen. I said, sure. Then I like, uh, but man, when she left, she left the company. And she, most time you leave a couple mm -hmm. songs. That's the only song she left. And that, that was the last song. He uh, really wasn't intended to do it, but she asked, could she do it? And I throw that music together so quick. So, so the background wasn't completed. The, the music was naked, but she sung it. And I said, they start putting them compilations out. Right. And I said, uh, okay. won't you uh, do these? It ain't completed. I said, she sung it, didn't she? And then look, this is the thing about it. She said, come on, bro, come on in here. And uh, this technology, I heard a few days, I actually they still got the raw footage. Okay. He said, uh, he said, she said, boy, come on in here and show me how you do that. And I said, you mean those little heels? Yeah, the heels and stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, she was doing, she okay. was doing it. And so she was singing, I was showing her. And so technology, like like uh, uh, Nat King Cole, and what's it called, we can go back in there and do that thing together. Okay. Because this is my reason. I asked him, I, said, I, said, I got enough footage to know how to stay out of her way. And we talked to her. She said, well, we need to do this together. But I know she had to leave. Have y'all did? No, y she, 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 she asked. She said, we need to do this together. Cause I like it, but I don't know it. So I wrote the words out for her. And it was the last minute to see it. That's amazing, man. She asked because she said, you think I can do this? And then he really didn't, didn't think too much about the song because it wasn't a company song at that time. Okay. So okay. when she asked, because you got to get a queen what she want, but it ended up being a big song. Guess what? DA still playing today. They still playing all over the world. And I and still play it. You still play it? Yeah, I still Thank play it. play it some more. Yeah, I'm going to keep playing it. You know, I'm going to keep playing it. even more now, now you know the business. Oh, man, you, you can count on me. You can count on me playing But you didn't know that, man. But yeah, that song means a lot to me. Well. Because guess what? Uh, I put it back out there with my new video. And a lot of people, it was always good. But uh, they begin to know it. Like, just like she put on the grill. Mm-hmm. And this side is already done. I'm gonna flip it. Okay. And man, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat up there some more because everybody might say, "Are oh, you singing Denise or sales?" Yeah, it's both our songs. Hey man, it was new to me. But you know, what? I mean, this is it's new to me. I didn't know all that about it. Yeah, but that's that's why that song right here. When I, why when I sing it show, it's a good song. But they see Denise Denise to put it on the grill, and everybody know me. And one three point five. The good thing about it. Uh, Greg Peterson, he just passed, but he played. Yeah, yeah, Greg. He that played was a terrible. Loss. Yeah, he, yeah, I will show that all out. But, 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 one hundred three point five and Greg mm -hmm. kept me alive at home. They, oh. oh, they played it. The song was right. out there, so I'm gonna put it on my new CD because uh, I, I didn't have a distribution on that song. After my, I mailed it out, you know, to Jackson Music Award. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's gonna probably pop up some more. Cause it will. It will. And then they're gonna think, oh, she she sang it. Then he song. I let them think they want what they want to think. Right. But man, they don't know the history. They, of they, they, they'll see. They'll see Papa do. Well, tell us about what's coming up on the on the July fourth. Oh yeah. man, tell, July, tell us about July twenty fourth, man. Uh, my management people's in um, uh, Club Paradise. Uh, email us, man. We had a couple of meetings, man, up in the Join the Blues Foundation. They advised me to do that. They're going to have a lot of people there. Okay. We're spending a big night. Like I say, man, I've been writing songs for a lot of international peoples. Mm -hmm. uh, Denise Lassell, Carl Sims, O.B., uh, Miss Jody, um, Sheba Posh Wright. All of those names I know. Uh -huh. uh, David Briston. Okay. Uh, who that is? A uh, sweet angel, a uh, Donny Ray. Diving sweet angel, Diving. Yeah, yes, okay. that's my cousin. That's my oh, for cousin. real? That's my cousin. Get out, man. Yes, yes, yes. Angel Dobbins is your cousin. Well, Mike is, but Mike they is. they connected, so she's my family as well. Wow. Uh, so uh, it's a more you rooted in music, man. Uh, it's a more I forgot about, but that's the main. That's from the camp. Uh, so it's just like, and when I was here, call me as who next? So like, oh yeah. Don, I said Donnie Ray, but uh, uh, Jay Hammer. He's you no know, Jay Hammer. I know Jay Hammer. And now that was really my. I told him. Are y'all related? No, we good friends. Just good friends. Because he's a black guy. Okay. But he, um, this particular, I'm gonna know I move on. But look, I did not give me producers fee. I got six songs on the last album. 
On Jay Hammers? The first four is my song. The last one is mine, One in the Middle. Six is near one. Well, you wrote the whole album, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but, you but you ain't got to give me uh, 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 what God gave me. It, it should have been co-produced by Gerard Weber. Right, it should have been. It is a beautiful. But no, 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 no. But see, you and, and these, you these, are, these and these are your 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 uh, flyers that you. Yeah, this this is my flyer. But anyway, yeah. I have these all these people's and they're like a. Uh, uh, I didn't really want to have. Uh, okay, I didn't want to really have uh, uh, a lot of. I could have put some big name people. Mm -hmm. Which is gonna cost me. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, do, that. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna yeah. do that a little later. But I need to know at this point how much Dwight Raven has on grown. His own. Right. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they are drawn right. to a certain extent. But I'm on the Facebook and calling people's and right. uh, like asking water. Yeah, you want to know who you got? But see, when I give you uh, recently, uh, a promoter called me for a show, and I gave him my price. We could have made it in the middle. Mm -hmm. And um, we couldn't do. We, I thought it was very disrespectful. I didn't want to disrespect him, but he was disrespecting me. So the Lord came to me and said, "You know, sometimes I don't want nobody to give me nothing. I open up the door and get it myself." It was time for me to do something else. So I said, "You know what?" So I so when I tell you, I paint this flow. I bump this flow right here. You got to feel good about what you ask for. You got to know what you work. Right. So so at, at that point, they drawn to a certain extent. So when I look up, if I had. 3,000 people and had TK Soul or Johnny Taylor Jr. They can say, oh, this nice mm -hmm. show for Johnny Taylor Jr. Really draw yeah. the crowd. Yeah, yeah. So they if I got 600, yeah. 400, or 1,000, I need the people to know because it's like when we eat, they going to, my fan, my fan club, man, you hear the team Raven. When, oh, you get yeah. to, when you get here, yeah. you're going to be surprised, man. Facebook is so powerful. Love and power. Yeah, Let powerful, me tell you something. It's a As a lady power, said, she said, I love your music. Anything I can do for you. My sweet, my my VP of uh, my uh, Facebook, my, my team Rayburn, she's from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. She's going to be in the house. And my other VP. Oh, okay. My other VP is from uh, Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania, she's coming. We got people from come from Chicago. We got people come from uh, just a lot of people's always say they're coming. And then I ain't really worried about home. Right. My 901 team Raven gonna be there. Okay. But I'm, but I'm getting established as a national company. I'm gonna have an annual show, and they go they go on Little Rock. Do you see the t-shirt? I had to show my wife the other day. I said this thing is special to me. The lady said me she said I don't want to surprise. She said, Team Raven Chicago, we love you. You know what I'm saying? So That's they come from uh, Chicago, uh, North Carolina, this and that. We're going to be hanging out. So that Friday night, I want you, I don't know what you got to do Friday night. I want you to hang with me Friday and Saturday. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm, we're going to do, we got a little tour set for them. Is that so, this Friday? No, the 23rd. The 23rd, and 24th. 23rd and 24th. Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. we're going to be going to set family. So I'm invited? Yes. yes. Okay. You All right, man. Weekend. Okay. You going to ride the limo with me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause I By all have, means. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, hey, listen, you know. Oh, yeah, but this is my time, my night. I mean, 8 o'clock, set doors open up at 7. You might be happy. I got, I got a table. A lot of DJs hit me up. Okay. They're going to be there. So I got, I got a media table. And, man, we got time. They got some type of presentation. I don't know how quick, but you want to say something, just give my people. You support me. They got some presentation made. You want to give me a chicken box or uh, this name? Okay. Whatever you want to present me with as right. a handshake. I'm not going to be cocking all in the back. I'm going to be right here. Listen, roast and toast to me. Right there in the midst. I'm going to be right there. They're going to be singing to me. I'm going to go take some pictures. I'll be right back here. All right. Hey, I mean, you know I what I'm saying? So, so, I mean, this is my name, my time. You would sing to me for and say, congratulations. I'm all in the back. I got plenty of time. I'll do that next time. Well, my, my friends are going to be singing to me. And, they got presentation. Like, I know our time is well. I get to talk about the good time. Oh, man, man it's, you know, we could sit here and talk forever. Yeah. You know, I, I've certainly enjoyed talking with you. I've learned a lot. Uh, uh, I'm sure the viewers have learned a lot. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in uh, and listening to me and my special guest, Memphis recording artist, uh, Echo Records recording artist, Memphis blues man, Mr. Gerard Raven. Thank you for coming on the show, Gerard. Thank you, man. July the 24th, Paradise, 645 East Georgia. Yeah, and we got a video coming up that we'll play uh, at the end of the show, y'all. I'll see y'all next week.